What's up, friends? Today we're checking out the new album by Skrillex, Quest for Fire. Super excited to listen to this album. It has been nine years since Skrillex has released a full-length album. Released plenty of music in that time. But there hasn't been like a pure Skrillex album. And I think it's weird to call this one a pure Skrillex album because there are so many features on it. I'm a huge Skrillex fan. I think he is one of the most interesting and creative producers certainly in EDM but probably in any genre I think he's just really intelligent I loved his stuff when he was with from first to last and I've loved all of his EDM DJ stuff as well I think Sonny Moore is a genius we'll be looking at this album from the perspective of a producer and songwriter let's get into it leave me like this with Bobby Raps is first up. That drop that's so focused on the bass while having a pretty standard house beat with, you know, four on the floor kicks with snares on two and four. Just really basic as far as drum beat goes, but that bass adds so much dancing texture to it combined with that really interesting vocal. I love the way he leads up to that second drop with the toms just going up and up and up in pitch. He creates more excitement through pitch instead of through speed or through added elements, which is really interesting. It's cool how Skrillex can take something which isn't too crazy on its own. Like, the, he found a good melody. He found something dope from Bobby Raps to use. You know, he found a good sung portion. But then he just turned it into this completely different thing. And there's so much excitement. There's so much kinetic energy. There's so much movement going on throughout the piece. Interesting sounds. Interesting percussive elements. It's fascinating because the beat in and of itself isn't that crazy. I mean, for the most part, he's just doing four on the floor house type stuff. But all of the elements that surround it, the synth work involved in it, the repeating vocal lines on top of it, used more as like another instrument in the EDM arsenal rather than a primary focus for the whole song. It's so cool. And those drops that are really focused on the bass go so heavy. Sick. He's so technical. Okay, good start. Good, good start to like kind of reaccustom you. You know, Rat Ratata, Ratata, like the Pokemon. This one has Missy Elliott, and Mr. Oizo. So you know, you know this one's gonna go hard. The way that that vocal pairs with that percussive element the ta -ta -ta -ta, in the background, changing pitches, both of them changing pitches, going back and forth. Uh, it's just so sick. So sick. It's so creative. There's this moment during the second drop, everything comes away. You know, you don't have anything else, but you have this vocal that just goes, what? The little things, it's those little things that are so crazy. What a great pairing of Skrillex with Missy Elliott. I feel like it's such an interesting backdrop for a hip hop track because the drums aren't always involved during the like heavy rap portion. There's a lot more synth work doing percussive work than drums and so that the flow of the rap is almost like emphasized by the fact that there's no drums you know we're not having anything else distracting us from that rhythm and then those kicks come in to introduce the first drop and it works so well and then we're just okay we're wild and now you know we're in a we're in a different universe and the drops are handled so well a lot of really cool manipulations of the ratata melody and, and and it just pairs so well with that percussion that he has going on it's just it's brilliant it's really really cool tears with joker and sleep net 
Let's get into it. No hesitation. This beat has such interesting development. Starts out really laid back, still moving though. Really restrained hi-hat pattern. And then hi-hat gets out with the sh shaker and then it keeps building and building you know, these weird flute elements. You started with a listen sample, which is just awesome. Oh. oh. That final drop introduced with the listen and then that that synth, the wobbly higher end synth just going balls to the walls. So sick. So sick. <laughs> Jit Money Cricket. That is such a bop. Ugh, such great use of vocal samples. Like every vocal sample in that is so cool. Don't you see the tears? Mm. And the listen. And just such a massive variety of synths that all work together in this interesting dark backdrop. It feels like I'm listening to like the best music for playing a futuristic driving video game at night. You know? <laughs> it's like the highest tier quality of that type of music. Brilliant drops. Makes you want to like go into a rave. It's sick. That was good. I like that one a lot. Tears is so sick. It's so, it's so like melancholic while at the same time having this great movement and excitement to it. The drum production is so interesting too. It makes me want to just like dig into it, figure out what that drum pattern is and just really dissect it and study it. <sighs> Especially at the beginning, I really like the opening drum pattern, but the drum patterns with all of the drops as well is really cool. The listen sample from Legend of Zelda, brilliant. Brilliant use of that sample. Probably one of the best uses I've seen because it wasn't like a, a core focus. It was just like, just grab your attention a couple times, you know? Rumble with Fred again and Flodan. I've heard this one before because he, he's put it out before. Quite a few of these tracks he's put out before. And let me tell you what. Rumble is a certified banger. In the jungle. Yo, listen. Yeah, that. Kid is in the jungle. Kid is in the jungle. That, listen, do you hear that? Kid is in the jungle. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's just, ugh. it's so good. The way they use a phaser and compressor to just hard limit these sounds so it has this like, do, 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 like this really chopped feel is so flippin' cool. It's so cool. Doing that with such a bassy element too. Mm. Then the beat just starts, you know, getting that four on the floor, that build, just super contrasted from the rest of the track to help build us back into that core element that we've heard before, that standard drop. There's so many little moments in that song that are so brilliant. Like the second time he does, listen, do you hear that? Kill us in the jungle. Like how they they drop the pitch the first time he goes through for that second run through so cool it's so cool it's just like these little things and also the fact that you had this zelda inspired listen on the track right before and then this one the main hook goes with the listen do you hear that killers in the jungle oh so cool and then the rumbling sound is so dope it's well developed it's interesting it's so bassy it's so kicky it's so so groovy yeah and the song switches vibes so many times you know at the end it becomes this lot smoother track when throughout it's just been this really dark interesting piece of music oh it's so cool it's almost like a bother to have to communicate this while I'm doing this video just because I I'm just enjoying these tracks so much I just love it I'm a, I'm a fan next one's butterflies with Stara and Flortet 
That high, over pitch corrected vocal in the background after that first big drop is so cool. I like how it has this call and response relationship with the primary vocal. So cool. The kind of like glass marimba throughout this song is so cool. It works so percussively, especially when it has this like big solo after the second drop. There's just so many great melodies. I think Skrillex is such a master of having just like a sing alongable melody in instrumentations that you would normally not sing along to. It's so brilliant. There's like this whoop on that ending drum pattern. It's cool. It's sweet. It's sweet. It's so sweet. Oh, that's such a great song. Great melody. Interesting use of like hip hop tracks along with it. Some great uh, drops. I think the, that just the primary hook of that song. Everybody loves somebody. Ooh, laddie. So great. It's just not like a bad part to the song. You know? It's just like every single section is interesting, sing alongable. The percussion's fascinating throughout. The way they build into certain elements is great. It sounds so lush and it sounds. It sounds like it's just a song with so much character. You know? It's like the blueprint of how good electronic dance music production should be done in my opinion i know some people hate on skrillex i am not one of those people if that hasn't been clear by now i love what this guy's got i think it's so sick inhale exhale with a luna and keto that vocal repeating throughout the drop with the bass boom 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 taking over that play that pure primary melody is sick. I'm like, I can't speak right now. Sorry. <laughs> the chopped vocal mm, 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 that like goes from right to left panning wise during that second drop. So good. So cool. It's such like a nice little thing, you know, so many details. I feel like the songs on this album lead into each other almost like you would expect if you were at like a Skrillex concert, which is such a nice touch. There's an inordinate respect for the details on this album. It's like Disneyland level of respect for the details. It's like the more you dig into it, the more you realize this isn't a facade. This is like there's layers to this. This is something that was worked on for a while and that was perfected for a while and that was really cared for. You can feel like the care in the music production. You can feel that minuteness, which is so cool. And that's so Skrillex, you know? Just these super small variations that make such a difference and that continue to entice us and keep that excitement going. Great vocal hooks throughout that song. Inhale, exhale, too hot, too hot. But, but that's not even like the focus, you know? The instruments are the focus, which is crazy. You have a great vocal hook, but you're, you're not even letting that be the main thing, which is so hip hop inspired, you know? Where they have these really cool sampled vocal hooks that they're using as a backdrop while they play on top of it. And I feel like he's doing that with the vocal on this song. Like that vocal hook is it's there, it's front and center, it's it's fine, but it's repeating enough that we're used to it and we're paying attention to what's going on in the instrumentation because that's where the money is happening. You know? <sighs> Such great manipulation of vocals. That was a sick song. A street I know is next up. Oh, 
I love the variations going on in that vocal. He's got this like specific chop he's going for, but then he edits within that chop. He's like, okay, I'm gonna introduce you to this kind of core melody, and then we're gonna create variation on variation, just as like someone like Mozart would do, where you know he takes a core melody and then he variates on it and variates on it and plays with it until so you have this completely different thing. It's so cool. That high-pitched, childish vocal doing the heavenly, like, I hear, I hear, that then goes into this other, just really light, breathy, heavenly portion with these, the drums lightening up, getting to the, just that shaker hi-hat sound, building back in, so, uh, so cool. The way that the hi-hat pattern at the end there feels like a glissando leading into the melody in that synth line hmm satisfying immensely satisfying the whole song was immensely satisfying that might be that might be one of my favorite tracks on this I haven't had a track I don't like, though. Ah, uh, it's no secret. It's no secret. Oof. Xena's next up. Xena's special. Xena's a special, special song. Ellie Kessler, Xena. That's just, I, like, I, I've already listened to the song because it's, it's already come out before, but man, oh, man. Oof. Ooh. The vocal leads in, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, just rising in pitch, and then you have this interesting drop, like one of the coolest drops ever. You have these tablas as like the main instrumentation of the drop, and he's changing the pitches in order to create this like super interesting, percussive, moving piece of wonder. After that second drop, when everything drops away and you just have like this clapping in the background, the mm, 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 mm. so tribal, it's so cool, it's so inspired by these other cultures in the best way. Sick. <laughs> what an absolute celebration of a song. I love the ending portion when there's this low end portion. It's like the kick, but lower. And it's on the 16th note. So it's like, da -da 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 -da. so you have just like constant rumble going on in the very bottom of your soul. We have like a pretty classic four on the floor with the kick and the snare and the hi hats. Very quick four on the floor, but it's just right on those beats. Um, and then you have these other percussive elements that are doing this. Da -da -da -da. And then the table on top of all of it with these dope tribal sounding vocals. I don't know what language this song is in, but it's great. It is a great piece of music. It is like, it, it showcases what makes Skrillex special, which is the fact that like, uh, it's possible to do these things technically. You know, you can find videos where people break down a Skrillex song and tell you how to make it. They show you what the chops he used. But to think of it in the first place, to have the creative ability to say, I'm going to do this with this song, is so next level. And it adds so much to society, to art, to the world. With Sway Lee, Slick Brain, and Posse Ej. It's juked. Too bizarre juked with those people. Swaley's a Swaley's a big time boy. He's had huge, huge hits. This drop is so cool. But that and then sick. Just super quick percussive patterns following a really interesting chopped vocal. It's what we expect, it's what we want. Yeah, you just keep drifting on. 
acoustic guitar leading into this screaming vocal in the background, probably taken from some meme or something, some world star type video. Blech. That's the brilliant. It's brilliant. So I've watched some videos of Skrillex doing live sets and it's really cool because he'll speed up the song and do things like this and then he'll be just like playing with the track as he goes and it's really cool and interesting. So it's like he's creating live for you, which is just the the best thing that an artist can do is make every experience of the a concert completely different because you don't know what he's going to do because he's going to mix it up. He's going to change things in a way that you don't expect. Um, and engage with the audience in a way you don't expect, you know? And this feels like it's captured that live energy that you feel from a Skrillex concert with that really fast run and tempo. And Swaley's vocals sound great on top of this mix. Um, it, it's like he took a pop song. It's like Swaley was just like, oh, I'm just going to sing a normal pop song. And Skrillex listened to it and was like, oh, that's cool. Like, what if I played with it for, you know, 50 hours? What would it sound like if I just messed with it? Just had fun. Just added random screams. Just added these really interesting vocal layers, back and forth, call and response vocals. Um, ooze. Just so many different vocal elements going into the song to just enhance it and make it such a special thing. Hydrate's next up. Flodan, Beam, and Peekaboo. Hydrate. Checking it out. Make sure you hydrate. This is one of my favorite switch ups in a song. You start with this really soulful vocal that feels like we're getting this auto tune, soulful hip hop type track that's just going to be inspiring and soulful throughout the whole thing. And then you just boom, the beat drops and you get this dope rap. Hated, some of this hot, just stay hydrated. They brought back that listen. They have that siren build and then listen. And then they bring it back again. Oh. Gotta listen. Sick. Don't give up on this. Don't give up on this. I love hearing that beginning come in again at the end with the synth. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. And that hi hat doing that steady beat. It really recontextualizes it, makes it so much more fun, keeping that high energy feeling that we've had throughout the song. There's these great vocal portions uh, near the beginning where you hear just people talking and you hear that siren kind of build in. <sighs> and then he brings back the siren again and then with a listen. The techniques of variation are so cool. And then that synth, dum, 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 dum. And then he has it more distorted and higher kind of 8-bit distortion the beeps and boops man it's like a scooped sounding bass at first and it's really cool i like how it scoops into the note great choices of synths and electronics throughout that song oh that's so cool it's also just a good thing to do you know you need to hydrate good advice warp tour 05 with pete wentz Pretty insane. I'm going to Disneyland. Yeah. With me. <laughs> With Sonny. With girlfriends. We're getting We're girlfriends. Getting girlfriends going to Disneyland. <laughs> what a great transitionary piece leading into the next. It's cool to hear Sonny from way back in the day, back when he was from first to last, hanging out with Pete Wentz. Super interesting. Um, I like the synths he's added in the background. I like how it starts leading into the next track in a really fun way. No complaints here. No complaints. I'll listen to a random... Warp Tour interview with Pete Wentz from back in the day where Sonny Moore is talking about how they're going to go to Disneyland together and get girlfriends. <laughs> it's so playful. It's so childish in the best way. Good Space with Stara is next up. I love the manipulation of that vocal to create this drop that's just... Just like it's so high-pitched and it's so sick. It's so sick. Yeah, it's so well done. Such a great chop. Great chop. Great manipulation of pitch. Great fade out. 
I dig the play snow, play snow, play snow. This atmospheric synth on top of it, just contrasting the really dry, intense, kinetic tone that we got throughout the rest of the song. Sick. We got Supersonic with Noiza, Josh Payne, and Dylan Brady. Supersonic is a baller track. Loved the song the first when it first came out. It's kind of came out like a year and a half ago. It's still great though. I'm gonna listen to it because it's just I'm just enjoying myself at this point, you know. I don't even care if anyone watches this video. It's just I'm just loving this album. I'm just enjoying the album. This drop is so amazing. Just these heavily distorted, rough sounding synths with these what? What? And then it's just that that brilliant chopping, great use, so exciting, so thrilling. Supersonic. I love how the synth almost sounds like it's falling apart because of all the chops made in it. The way it's phased in the specific way makes it feel like it's broken, like the machine's just like falling apart. So cool. Corrupted software on that one. Sorry, your software has been corrupted by Supersonic. What a, what a sick song. I love the intro to it. I love how it builds into it. Get this really soulful part with these synths. And then you just add a little bit of distortion, a little bit of like crackle that leads into just one of the best drops that Skrillex has ever done, honestly. What a what a banger. Hazel theme's next up. Almost there, guys. Sorry, like. One more minute. This reminds me of Dole Scythe from Porter Robinson album, but it's just like done even better. And I love Porter Robinson's album, Nature, Nurture. I think it's amazing. But this, just the way it chops and the way it kind of like shows how he's developing it, how he's like talking with friends as he's making it. I'm almost done. They have like this pure vocal against this really scratchy, like irritating vocal and the contrast set up so well and makes it sound so much purer oh, i love how that was transitioning into the next track yeah cool track i don't know why it doesn't have any artists listed on it on apple music but that's a baller it's a great track i'm realizing as i'm reaching the end of this that the Blady song isn't on here. Real Spring. That song's a banger. Like, that's a great song. That surprised it's not on the album. I don't know why it isn't. It's probably a reason, but... Porter Robinson and Bill Borelli are joining Skrillex on this final track. Still here with the one that I came with. <sighs> sad that we gotta end it. Sad that, sad that the album's over. It's been a thrill. It's been an absolute pleasure. Feels like, you know, seeing an old friend that you haven't seen in a while, and you've kept, like, occasional contact with them throughout the years, and then you have a nice chance to sit down, but then they have to go, and you're just like, ah, oh, I've enjoyed this so much. I'm so sad that you have to be on your way. I love that still here with the ones that I came here hook. It's... It's one of those things where you feel like it would get old because it's very repetitive, but it doesn't feel old. Like it develops so well and the chopping is so intelligent with it. That's so endearing too. More than like 20, make some noise right now. I love how that more abrasive synth builds into this ending portion. It feels so victorious and so big and so cheerful and bright. I think that's that Porter Robinson influence right there. There's also been some cool nature sounds that I feel like I assume have influenced. It's, it's cool. What an ode to friendship and loyalty right there at the end. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What a gem, what a gem of an album. Glad it exists. 
yeah, that last song gives me real, you know, my friends are my power, Kingdom Hearts type vibes, you know? I feel like they should use it at the end of a, uh, a Kingdom Hearts game. Maybe for four. Who am I kidding? It's not with Utada, so it's not going to be on there. Uh, great. Great, great, great. Loved it. Loved the whole album. It was awesome. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it immensely. I'm going to listen to it a bunch. I'm probably going to be obsessed with this album for a little bit. So uh, don't be surprised if it comes up again in other videos I do as I talk about new music coming out because this was phenomenal and I loved it. And I'm going to listen to it a lot. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's increased your enjoyment of the album as well and made you appreciate portions that you may not have noticed. A lot of gushing on my part over what's going on. If you have enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you liked commented, shared, subscribed. Also, check out my music. I love Skrillex. I wouldn't say I'm anywhere close to his abilities, but I do have an album called Giovanni that might be of interest to you. It has some interesting vocal samples and vocal use. Appreciate you all. Catch on the flip. Bye.